those that don't know, about uh, five, six months ago, uh, my husband and myself, we moved to Atlanta to uh, expand our business. Um, still have the Beauty and Barber Salon in St. Louis, Missouri, y'all know. That's the hometown, but we did come here to expand. Um, we did a lot of great things in Missouri. So, you know, Atlanta is a place where I always want to It's a lot of people that I used to hang with and I love them to death and love they, their souls, but they're not where I want to be. They're not. It's places I want to be in life. It's things I want to do. And I've just decided for myself that I'm going to figure out a way to get around those people. Because every day, Kiana want to keep growing. And you should too. guys I'm asking you one thing because I really need it right now I need prayer I need prayer I need strength I need love I do stay encouraged I'm gonna go in my home go in my little prayer room I'm gonna talk to God well 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 ATL cuz <laughs> we just touched down. We just touched down. Hey, we touched down. What I say? We just touched down. <laughs> sisters and brothers on social media that keep me going some days like real talk I have some very positive people that's on my timeline and they help me through my gloomy days because yes I do have them you know what I'm saying honestly if I'm talking if I'm being totally perfectly honest I'm having one right now and the reason I'm going live is because sometimes you gotta reach out and tell people that you need love, you need support, you need care. 
you just need a hug and honestly you guys i need that i need that right now i mentor so many women i encourage so many women i pump life and positivity in so many women but sometimes i need that myself and god knows right now i need that you all When you come to a new uh, state or city and you're trying to learn people and you're trying to learn, you know, the things that they do and I, that can be challenging. Um, and coming here with our kids, just us and our kids, you know, um, it's just us. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no way. We can't drop the kids off at our kinfolk's house. We can't, we can't go, uh, you know, so right now my husband is, you know, at a retreat. I stayed back due to, um because we have our children here um however um uh, you all you just i just want to talk about her because you have to be prepared for life change How are you? Uh, thank you for joining. This is CBW Podcast. Um, I know people have a lot of questions concerning this case. Let me see what's going on here. Okay. So anyway, um, as people are saying that this was not a murder suicide. Let me put my little things up here. Okay. They're saying it's not a murder. I mean, it's not a murder suicide. I just want to first say this, you know, every case that is a murder suicide is not always just murder, you know, and so, um, I know in some cases it's, it's hard for families to believe that their family will uh, take their life, you know, their own life, you know, in some cases, you know, um, in some cases, people do commit suicide. Some cases they do. OK. But in some cases they don't. I just read a story about this um, this guy that was. um he was a young guy and he had a girlfriend and a friend, you know, and um, 
allegedly they were saying they were saying that he committed suicide and he didn't commit suicide. So there are some cases where people are saying people are committing suicide, which they're not committing suicide. They're making it look like it's suicide by all by um, having a gun shot, you know, to the head, you know. So. Hi. Thank you. So. You got some crooks out there that would make a a murder seem like a murder suicide. I'm not saying this is not a mur murder suicide, but I'm just throwing out, you know, my opinion about certain situations. There's another case that I saw and I've been looking up this murder suicide cases and stuff. So there's one particular case that I believe that is not murder suicide. OK, well, I don't have all the facts here with this case. But with the other case I've been looking at, they have I, I seen the facts. I seen some evidence that shows it wasn't a murder suicide. OK, so but I do know that it's hard for some families to to grasp, to even think their families would do such thing to themselves. You know, I know it's hard sometimes with, you know, certain cases. You know, but some cases are not murder suicide people. Some cases are not. So let me show you guys. I went. Uh, the reason why I'm going to show you this guy because I want this in the video. I want to make sure I have this in the video here. So I'm going to talk to you guys about. Um, you guys already know about the divorce. You already know about you know him filing for divorce. Um. From his wife, Kiana R. Burns. Um, and it also states in the divorce that she committed adultery. And I'm going to say allegedly because this divorce uh, decree, it looks like it was, in my opinion, divorce doesn't even look like it's, it, it looked like it, she didn't have no opportunity to, uh, to really say, okay. I contest the divorce or whatever. It's just like, I'm not going to contest it. We're just going to go ahead and divorce. That's what it looks like to me. But I may be wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. So this is the uh, divorce paperwork that you guys, you know, so you guys can see it. I know on most YouTube channels, you can't really see the divorce papers. So I made it clear for you guys so you guys can really see the divorce papers. And so you won't have to see this one right here. Say defendant's adultery. OK, adultery. This is what it says. He filed for the divorce because of adultery. But I don't believe. Um, you know, people bring up your background when things like this happen to distort your character or to make it believe that such case is a murder suicide. They will bring up all kinds of stuff to make it look like it was a murder suicide. You know, I'm not saying it, it's not, but. I'm just giving you giving my opinion with certain situations. They will bring with your background. If you say something on your live and it sounds like you need help or something like that. Some of these things that that she was saying is a normal, normal It's very normal. No one is going to go through life not feeling tired. OK, everybody gets tired. OK, it didn't sound like a suicide video. Hey, I'm going to commit suicide. It was just something she was going through. She's going through life changes. You know, so that's that's what I see, you know, in the video. And she also was talking about her friends. Also, you know, we do have friends that doesn't mean us no good. And we have to let them go so that we can move forward to the future. And that's what she was, you know, really talking about. Maybe she had a conversation with one of her old friends or something like that. Maybe they didn't agree on certain certain things. Maybe she told them she got to move on. You know, that's what it looks like to me in the video. Excuse me. It doesn't look like so much of she's having problems with her husband because from what Tracy Wiggins was saying that he had already he wanted he had already contacted her as a real estate agent about a house. So I think they agreed on it. You know, so like I said, it could be a murder suicide, but I'm just throwing out my opinions with this situation here. It's all alleged. Uh, so. Like I said, this is divorce. You guys can read this, take a look at it. And I try to make it 
clear as possible so you guys can read it. This is the divorce decree here. Uh, Ronnell Burns wanted a divorce from Kiana Burns. So, and there are some other things in this uh, video here that I want to show you also and I want to talk about. But we have to, you know, and it, it was funny. This is what also I want to say. It was funny how when the situation happened, you, you had all kind of, now this, this is what I want to talk about here. This is a post he posted November the 6th, right? At 2.11 a.m. This is the post and somebody said the per permission of this post is eerie. That means, you know, it seemed like he spoke his own death or something like that. You know, so uh, um, it was it, it was kind of strange. It was uh, November the 6th at 2.11 a.m. That's the time on it. So it was kind of eerie. And this is also the post somebody posted about <laughs> um, Kiana supposed to have been messing around with the guy over here in the green. You know, it's just people just throwing out so many allegations, so many rumors against them. And these two people are dead. And it's kind of strange. You know, you, you kind of think, OK, was they really murder? Because you got so many people coming out of work, work claiming they don't have, you know, affairs with Ronnell. They claiming all this stuff about Kiana. They claiming this stuff about Ronnell. It's strange. You know, you wonder, OK, was this really murder? And then you had one lady. OK, and this is her best friend here, supposed to be her best friend here. I don't know if you guys can read that. But it's saying that they have not confirmed whether who shot who in the murder suicide. So this is something she had posted or whatever. So I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But um, I try to make it as clear as possible. But this is supposed to be the best friend. She's posted something about the investigation. They, they're not clear about who pulled the trigger. OK, so they are yet still investigating this situation. And this is Sabrina. Right. This is Sabrina, the, the lady you just saw that that was Sabrina right there. So. OK, this is what I want to talk about. This this right here is inside the mind of the winner. This is Ron Nell's post that was posted on his page. Also, June the 20th. OK. And it's also on Kiana's page, which is his wife. OK. So it's posted the same day. And it's posted with the same, you know, little noise or whatever I played at the beginning of the other video that I just played. So everybody got, you know, like speculation, like this is like the a recording of when they passed away or something like that. But he had it on his page June the 20th. But you can't edit on Facebook. You can't edit on Facebook. You can't do that. But I don't know about Instagram. You can't edit like you can on Facebook. You can put another post. And another picture, you can X out the old one and put in a new one. You can do that. Okay, because I have done that before. Changed out the pictures and stuff. So um, so there was, like I said, there was one lady that posted, her name was Sabrina. She posted and said something about she became the new vice president or something like that. He, he made her vice president at four o'clock in the morning. I was like four o'clock in the morning. Are you serious? I mean, just so much stuff just doesn't seem right, you know, for her to even post that. He even, I, I mean, I just didn't see no need of her posting that, saying she was made vice president by Ronnell at four a.m. in the morning. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know. So, you know, it's just it's just certain things that are going on that causing me to be like, hmm, why is these people bringing up these? people's background, try to figure out was they cheating. It's too late for all of that. These two people are not here anymore. They're not here. So why are they trying to dig up their backgrounds, trying to justify this situation in some kind of way? I'm just trying to figure it out. It, 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 trying to justify him, trying to justify. I mean, it's just a lot going on on the Internet with this case. And I, and I think it's, it, it just doesn't seem right. These people... I mean, these people are gone now. I mean, there's no need. Then you got people coming on my post, you know, saying things too. you know, like I know it's murder suicide. I wanted to respond to that. You don't know it's murder suicide. if You wasn't there. So none of us know if it's murder suicide at all because we don't know the real evidence. 
of the whole situation. You know, from allegedly they were saying that he got shot in the growing and she was shot in the jaw. So that's that's only a ledge. I'm not going to say it's facts until we see the real evidence in the report. And I haven't seen the news reporters come out and say anything about this case. So um, we can have a clear mind of this situation. Uh, maybe that like like they say, they are, they are still investigating and the family feels like that there's more to this that meets the eye. And sometimes it is. And people do make crimes seem as though the person committed suicide. And, and it's true. Like I said, I just saw a case where somebody tried to make a, a crime seen as uh, a murder seen as a, a suicide. It's it's horrible, you guys. I I'm just it's just so horrible. So let me show you this lady. Her name is Rhonda, and she was on the internet talking about uh Ronell Burns in a very harsh way. Um, which I felt like it was just unnecessary. Why talk about it after somebody died? It's not gonna resurrect them or anything like that. Like what, what's the need of talking about it now? You should have talked about it when they was yet living. That would have made everything better and OK. It's too late to talk about what they should have done or what they need. To, I mean, it's just too late for all of that. We're trying to figure out what's going on. Why wasn't there any cameras? Why wasn't any cameras in their house when they had cameras? When they actually had cameras in their house. All the cameras was taken away from their house. So, I, look, I watch everything. When people come in on my post, I watch everything. Okay? Why are you trying to convince everybody on the internet that this man slept around with you? I've saw notes where women said this, women said that. Why are you trying to convince people now? This man is dead. What you're saying is of non effect. All of it is it is irrelevant to what's going on now. You know, some people tell on themselves and feel guilty. And I mean, they just start rubbing, just just yapping their mouths. I'm like, all this stuff these people are saying about these this couple is irrelevant now. You should have been saying it then. You know, I'm just saying you should have been speaking out. You should have been saying something. And I mean, I heard of alleged abuse. He was abusing her. OK, if she was if he was abusing her. Why you never spoke out about it? Why you didn't? Why didn't you post that on your page? If he had all these things going on with him, why you guys did not post none of this stuff on your Facebook pages? If all this stuff were going on with them. Like I say, I don't just look at a video and say, oh, yeah, she wanted to commit. No, you can't just go by that. People go through stuff and people overcome stuff, too, as well. You can't just look at that one video. It looked like she was going through some stuff with her friends, too. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to make sense of this. Okay, so let me see. Let me play this video that this lady, Rhonda, she was, oh, she was going at it. This can't go down like this. So I'm not here to disrespect anybody, but I'm here to let it be known. Men Stop allowing these men to have you and convince you that you can keep having your life with your wife and your family and your kids and it don't affect you. This man is sick in his head and he wants to make you sick and then it's going to carry on. It's nothing good that comes from it. But if you choose to live that life, live it with yourself and stop bringing in and dragging women who choose not to live that life with you. Stop using us as a platform to gain an identity to justify that you is going to say that you're not. And that's going to be your witness. You just prove that you can sleep with both sex and don't have no conscience about it. That's the only thing you prove. You cannot continue to sleep and violate your body and temple and think that you're going to be doing the devil's business and out here perpetrating like you with God.
So that was Rhonda. Okay. She claims this is all alleged. Remember the rumors about him having a disease or something like that, right? So she goes live and she do, does this post. So I'm like, how is this relevant when these two people are dead? These people are not here. You know, you guys know so much about this. It's like you it makes you think that they was something happened to them besides murder suicide. Because how people are coming out of the woodwork with information they should have exposed when this man was alive. That's what I'm saying. You got all kind of people coming out with information about this, information about that. Oh, I know this about her. But if you knew that about her, why didn't you help her? I'm just saying. And so. This is another. uh thing here. This is the daughter. I want you guys to reach out to her. Her name is Mar Marina uh, Reed. Reach out to her. This is a post she put up about Alexis Martin. I know everybody's talking about Alexis Martin, how it seems like she has something to do with it or something is kind of mysterious about her. Well, they got into it about, you know, allegedly taking some things from her parents' house and she want the stuff back. Exactly. Exactly. So she want the things back from Alexis Martin. That's what she that's what she wants. The stuff back from Alexis Martin. But this is all alleged. I don't know if she took it or not. I wasn't there. But this is what the daughter is claiming. But I want you guys to go support her and follow her and, um, you know, give her your love and support because this is not easy. She also wanted Alexis to apologize, too. And I think Alexa blocked her on Facebook. And I think that's not nice. Um, so the girl that was dancing with her, that's Alexa. Alexa was like her, you know, like she was like the seemed like she was the best friend the way they used to. I mean, in every picture you see, you see Alexis. She's in every picture. I'm like, wow. Oh, my God. She's everywhere. And I'm like, wow. And then some way, I'm going to be honest, this is my opinion. I don't feel like she was actually a friend. Okay. But she says she's a friend. She says she loved him, but I just don't believe she was a friend. Okay. I've watched her in a lot of videos. I watched her on TikTok. I watched her all over. I don't watch all the videos, almost all the videos of her and Kiana together. I just don't believe that she was a sincere friend. OK, so this is Marina. She's sending her condolence. Well, she's sending her love to heaven to her mom. And so that I'm telling you, this is not going to be easy for the kids. And so you guys show your love to the family. And I'm showing all the love I can to the family. And this is this is not easy. And you have people on the Internet. Uh, then allegedly Alexis is you know not helping the situation like please respect the family these are their children they have to live with this for the rest of their lives you know so like i say just so much going on on the internet it makes you think that you know this wasn't a murder suicide i'm just going it's my opinion you know it, it seems like it was a murder you know so i mean it just the way things are going on, it just doesn't make any sense. All the disrespect, all the people coming out of the work, work talking and downgrading these people's character. You know, these people are gone. You should have done that then, but not now. OK, I'm just saying it just doesn't. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant to the fact, you know, of what ha I'm just saying. Some of the stuff, it really, it is irrelevant. The only thing that we can say is the divorce. That's it. But like I say, Tracy Wiggins, she's a real estate agent. She said that they supposed to, when they got a house, he's supposed to got another house and they supposed to stay like in the same neighborhood or something like that together. So I'm just saying, um, this whole situation, it, it just seemed kind of strange to me how people are coming out, disrespecting them, saying that she was cheating with this guy and that guy. I'm like, what's up with all the anger? These people are gone. Okay. 
But I understand the anger from the family, both sides. They want to know why this happened and why that happened. I understand the anger, the pain that they're going through. You know, so, I mean, if anybody else have any more information about this case, you're more than welcome to comment below and let me know what's, what else is going on, what, what I missed, because I really want to know more about this case. You know, I really do, you know, but it's, you know, let the family grieve. Let them, you know, deal with the situation, you know, but I hope they don't just keep it a secret or what's going on. I hope they allow the public to know what is going on with this case because, um, you know, I don't think that people thought, uh, that this story would get as big as big as it have gotten. I don't think they thought this. They thought that, okay, they dead and gone. Ain't nobody. No, everybody, you know, I'm in Atlanta. Okay. I'm in ATL, so we know things here. When it happens, somebody going to tell somebody and somebody going to post something and we're going to find out about it. OK, so. This story is going to get bigger until they finally say this was a murder suicide. So from what I'm hearing that they don't even know who pulled the trigger at this time. So this is only a ledge and allegedly he was shot in the groin. And she was shot in the jaw. OK, so this all alleged. This is not I'm not going to say it's facts. You know, I don't have the police report, but this is, you know, some, you know, some some words and information I have gotten, you know, so. So make sure you guys subscribe, like and share. And if you guys have any other information about this case, make sure you guys comment below and let me know. Um, and I don't think I think people are harassing Alexis Martin, too. Well, I haven't harassed her, you know. But, you know, this 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 is a very sensitive case here. It's very sensitive. And I just want the la I want the investigators and say, hey, this was a murder suicide or this was a murder. Let us know what's going on. Don't hide the truth, you know, because every situation is not a murder suicide. There are some people that are actually being murdered and the suspect is making it look like a murder suicide. OK. So I don't see how somebody can just say something was a murder, murder suicide without collecting evidence and doing the investigation, investigative work first and then say, hey, this was a you know, a murder suicide, you know, because the last case I, I read about, I'm going to post it here. They didn't even, they ignored all the evidence and just completely said it's a suicide because the guy had a bullet in his head. I mean, people get shot in the head on the right side. Okay. But apparently this guy was shot on the left side. So, this is this is crazy, you guys. So make sure you guys look out for any strange activity on social media of anybody saying strange things about this couple. Um, and it is very strange to me. How, how. Hold on, somebody keep commenting on this. They haven't showed up yet in the stream yard. Your dreams online. OK. OK, let me here. I don't know if it started or what. OK. So anyway, there's somebody keep coming on the, the live. So anyway, make sure you guys subscribe, like and share and. Make sure you hit the thumbs up so this video can, you know. Travel around YouTube and I will be getting that beeping sound. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me on CBW podcast. People get it twisted. It ain't that it ain't they winning season because people always say that it ain't, I, I, they either in their winning season or they not in their winning season and they justify that rather they're being successful or things are happening for them or not based on if it's they winning season. 
everything is going good. I'm on my right track. If I'm not in my winning season, hey, that's why I'm that's why I'm losing. That's why I'm struggling because it just ain't my week, uh, uh, winning season. And I and I think that most people need to feel good about losing, and so they 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 start speaking loser language. And it ain't my winning season, in my opinion, is loser language because when did you in life winning have to wait on the season? What, what, when is the right season for you to lose? I guess that's the that's the flip side of that question. When is we had to ask yourself, when is when is the when is the season for you to lose? Like who who plans that out? Now I heard a winter, spring, summer, fall, but but in somewhere in these seasons it's supposed to say you're designated People to that's winning. It has nothing to do with a season. It has to do with their preparation. It has to do with, with, with their activity. It has to do with their vision. It has to do with their work ethic. It had nothing to do with a season, right? Everybody that I see winning pay some type of price to position themselves to win, and it had nothing to do with a season or a timing. It had to do with the So when I look at sports, <clears throat> you say, okay, uh, the Lakers wasn't in their winning season. Well, the Lakers for seasons and seasons the ownership of the Lakers didn't recruit and didn't pay the right type of people. They wouldn't pay the right coaches. The Chicago Bulls, same difference. That they won six championships with Phil Jackson. Now, some I guess some say, well, that was the Bulls win the season. No, Michael Jordan had the skill set, right? Michael Jordan had the work ethic. Scottie Pippen was a great addition. And all these pieces with Phil Jackson, they put together with the puzzle. Same thing with the, the current Lakers staff. It wasn't that it wasn't their winning season in LeBron's first year. They didn't go and recruit and pay another big time star to be with LeBron. LeBron. So it was the second year means that, oh, they got Anthony Davis, so that was their winning season. No, ownership decided to go put the pieces together. Rob Palinkas decided to go put the right pieces together, make the trades and do what it needs to take to build a championship team. Had nothing to do with a season. You think about prosperous businesses. Some people start, start small businesses, and those businesses stay small. It ain't got nothing to do because it was your season to stay small. It was your, some businesses go out of business. It ain't because it was your season to go out of business. It's the things and the preparation and the events around what you were doing to make that business either be successful or fail. Had nothing to do with the season. And as long as you can tell yourself that I'm in my, 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 my losing season or I'm waiting on my winning season, you ain't gonna never win. The reality of it is most people haven't sat back and put together a game plan on what's going to cause you to win. Most people have gotten caught up and they got comfortable with the routine. And they so, they, they're afraid to really position themselves to win. Because most people never try to fulfill their dreams or ambition. A lot of people got a lot of thoughts in their mind, a lot of gifts, a lot of talents, a lot of ambitions, a lot of, uh, of things that they can be applying themselves to. But the, but the, but the, but the fear of failing, the fear of it not working, paralyzes a lot of people. They never even step their foot on faith to try to achieve anything. All they do is they leave that desire and that thought process in their spirit and they die with it. Because they so afraid that what if it don't work, they can't embrace what if it will. So they stay stuck. And then they start again talking losing language. Well, I guess it ain't my winning season. See, I just decided that it's just as easy for me to say that it's always my winning season. Even though in reality in life, you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs. That's just a part of life. When I'm right. winning or when I'm losing, it was all predicated on what I was doing to cause winning or losing to happen. See, when I was when I was grinding, when I was giving it everything I got, when I had a clear game plan, when I sought out the mentorship, people who had already won at what it was that I wanted to do. See, when I did those things, winning became I was in my winning season. When I wasn't seeking mentorship, when I wasn't working hard, when I wasn't being the first one woke and the last one sleep, I started losing. It was it's a scripture in the Bible that, that I read before. It said, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands to rest. And it says, suddenly calamity about that. So, and, and so when adversity hit, people say things like, oh, it, it must not have been meant to be. No, it's meant to be. But do you have a reason to go keep fighting hard enough? It, when, when you get those trying times, when it don't quite work out the way you thought it would, do your language change about what you believe? Do your language change about what it is that you wanted? See, you got to be careful to say, hey, listen, 
the first thing it says is to write the vision down. Whatever it is that you want that you aspire for, that you're supposed to write that vision down. You're supposed to make that vision plain so whoever picks it up and read what your vision was, they can pick it up and they can run with it. And so if, if you got your vision written down, when adversity comes, you don't abort it. Right? When things not going the way you want it to go, you don't abort what you came for in the first place. You keep fighting out of it. You may have to adjust your plans, but never abort it. So people who live in the losing season, it's also people who don't learn or have not made the necessary adjustments along the way. You got to know how to adjust. You got to know how to be frustrated with the things that you want. You got to learn how to be frustrated and keep uh, I mean, the story moving. about the church, you guys, was uh, the story from about, I don't know, let's say, I guess about seven months ago, something like that. Seven months, six, seven months ago. Uh, when my wife and myself, we decided we was going to get a divorce, um, that we ain't want to be with each other no more. Um, it was just, we was just six months ago when Kiana and I decided that we didn't want to be with each other uh, no more. And uh, some of the things that uh, transpired. And so I remember like it was yesterday, we were uh, sitting in front of um, our beauty salon. So anyway, design, uh, we sitting out in front of the salon and uh, we talking about, you know, we just didn't want to do this no more. She was tired of me. I was tired of her. Uh, we was going to go on about the time the night had reached us. God had changed our heart. And I start thinking back to Jesus when he was on the cross. And Jesus was on the cross, and the same very people that he was dying for, he pierced them inside, and he wanted to quit, and he wanted to give up. He didn't want to go further. He, he looked up to heaven, and he told his father, he said, listen, if there's any other way, he said, if there's any other way, God, remove this cup from my head. In other words, let somebody else do this. It got to be a better way than me getting on this cross and dying for everybody. He said, got to be a different way that we can save the earth. He said, but nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, not my will. In other words, so he went through trials. He went through hardship and it didn't even feel good to Jesus going through the persecution and the tribulations. But he was focused on why he was put here on earth in the first place. And I think that's one of the biggest keys to our success is that in spite of what we go through, see, people think our life just been rosy and it ain't rosy now. We got a better marriage than we ever had, but our life ain't rosy. We got crap. That's happening. If I get on here and tell you about all the crap that's going on in our life, you'll say, I feel sorry for them. But we don't want nobody to feel sorry for us. Because we focus and we know why God put us on this earth and it's to make an impact on people's life. It's to inspire people to go be great. But we got crap too. But when we go through our crap, we ain't giving up, quitting, letting go of what he put us on earth for. And it's to make a change for people, to give people inspiration that whatever in life they want to fight to go have and go do, they can go we do it. done with each other. We was at the top of our lungs screaming, finished. But by the end of that day, it was nevertheless. And we wasn't playing. We wasn't threatening, talking. We were done. He, at the end of that day, we said, nevertheless, not our will, but let your will be done in our life. And when we came to that conclusion, things changed. Like, th I mean, things, I mean, things just started to happen. And I start to realize that every promise of God is conditional. See, he said, if my people. See, you heard the word if before all of the promises of God. He said, if you are willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. See, a lot of us fool with pride. We fool with pride. We want to do whatever we want to do, whenever we want to do it, because we grown. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin. Then I will heal their land. Some of y'all land need to be healed right now, but you ain't turned. You ain't turned. You ain't turned away and walked in the purpose that he had for your life. You still trying to do things your way, and you still wonder why crap ain't going right for you. Because it ain't nevertheless. You ain't got to the point in your life where you say nevertheless. Not my will, but let yours be done.